folks, Dave here, and welcome back to Fallout 4 and the People's Republic of Warwick Homestead. This is the communist theme settlement that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, and last episode you guys got to chime in with all of your uh, evil red menace suggestions, one of which came directly from you guys over on my Discord channel, and that is a new flag just for the settlement. I had the basic red army flag originally, uh, set up here, but there's more of a Chinese communism tint, uh, Maoist communism uh, leaning to this settlement. So it didn't quite feel like it fit in, and the Duke over on my Discord channel mocked up this really cool design, which you guys can see has the classic uh, communist sickle, as well as some waves for this being a coastal settlement. After all, this isn't going to be uh, any kind of pure communism. This is going to be a post-war amalgamation of a couple of different branches of communism strained through American propaganda, probably with some, you know, Bioshock Infinite style uh, American patriotism mixed in there. It's going to be a mix of a whole bunch of things. Alright, Brahmin, no, help yourself. <laughs> but yeah, at the same time, even though it's going to be uh, kind of a mix of different branches of communism, it will look better if it has more of a consistent theme. So uh, we're going to have a couple of different things in this settlement to explain uh, where they got their ideology from, but the new flag is going to help make things look a little bit less all over the place. So this is the factory that I worked on last time. And as you guys pointed out, if this is going to be a communist settlement with a farmer's, not market, uh, farmers commune, I guess, where they're exporting a bunch of food and trading with food, you've got to have somewhere for the workers to stay. And if the Warwick family that owns the settlement is mostly going to stay out here on the tugboat, I'm now imagining that as a uh, housing unit, that tugboat right there reserved just for the communist leadership, well then we got to have a place for the workers to live. And I've been watching through the HBO Chernobyl series. So for this episode, I've prototyped a farmer's housing unit with some of that classic, heavily concrete Soviet style architecture. It's heavily inspired by the housing units from the city of Pripyat in the Ukraine. Uh, there's just something about that uh, USSR use of concrete that is just super imposing. And if you guys are wondering how to build this same kind of structure for yourself, the main pieces came from the Snappy Builds parking garage set, actually. Some of them were snapped together, but some of them I had to hand place to get the alignment of some of these uh, centered doorways. But the parking garage set from Snappy Builds is where you guys can find the pieces. Now, of course, this is going to be a post-war structure. So even if these settlers had used communist, you know, uh, magazines, photos of communist settlements to inspire their building of this concrete <laughs> mega facility for their farmers uh, to house all of them, they wouldn't have been perfect in their construction, uh, even trying to mimic what they saw in those magazines and reports and whatnot, which is why I've added tons of wooden supports and added a bunch of small imperfections to the concrete on the building. Uh, I imagine they would have had to reclaim the metal parts of the structure from the destroyed city of Boston nearby, and then perhaps the concrete is a mix of old and new based on imperfect post-war techniques. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to have that monolithic, imposing Soviet communism style to the structure while still making it look post-war, seeing they've plopped it right here in the middle of Warwick. You've got your uh, monument here dragged from downtown Boston, a monument to science and progress. And again, you can see some of the uh, rougher parts of the building here. Everything's just a little bit off. It's about 90% perfect, but just not quite there. Then at the entrance here, you have yeah. some of that uh, slight American patriotism. You know, the original revolutionary, if you will. George Washington, combined with some communist propaganda. Yeah. And uh, I have not put a door on the facility just yet. Haven't quite decided which one's going to fit it, but it is going to have a door, yeah. of course. 
Then inside you have some, you know, nice wallpaper that's been reclaimed from somewhere, but still just a little bit grim looking, even with the personal possessions and some of that uh, modern artwork used to decorate what's essentially a uh, communist barracks for our farmers. Same thing on this side. You got some artwork on the walls and just a few personal possessions. A lot of the furniture being basically the same. Just a couple of pieces uh, here and there that might be different. And of course, a bit of communist propaganda there on the walls. Now, once you leave the sleeping quarters, you have the common area. We have a small library right here, complete with a reading light. Yes. What are these books, actually? <laughs> Communists from space. All right, that's pretty appropriate. Nice little reading nook right there. Keep the workers occupied. Huh? Kind of a small dining nook right here. Uh, just a small one. And it looks like somebody has smuggled in some <laughs> General Dave's holiday eggnog right there from outside the settlement. We have a fireplace here to heat the structure, and most of these windows that they've rebuilt uh, do not have glass in them, so they've put some tarps over to help hold the heat in and keep the weather out. And you've got another one of our flags right here over a nice roaring fireplace. Oh, and of course, a small communist radio. I imagine that one would have been taken off of the communist sub in the harbor and it probably doesn't pick anything up uh, unless we're actually going to have these guys broadcasting their own signal from somewhere here at the station as well, which might be a cool addition to have a small radio room out there on the tugboat where the Warwick communist leadership is broadcasting a weak signal out into the Commonwealth, probably being jammed by the Minutemen. And then on this side of the living space, you have a small display case with a microscope yeah. and some hammers, just some monuments to progress and the workers. Just some interesting communist tropes to help Hi, detail our structure here. And speaking of tropes, you've got to have the loudspeaker right here so that uh, announcements, wake up calls, and propaganda can be pumped directly into the sleeping quarters. So let me know what you guys think of this uh, ramshackle attempt by the Warwicks to recreate some classic uh, USSR style architecture. How do you guys think that's gonna work for our workers? We are going to have an expansion to the farm here as well, I think. And you guys know we're gonna have to have a guard tower uh, to look in at the workers. But for today, I wanna do a bit of building uh, in this corner right here. So. That's not going to be quite enough housing for all of the farmers. So we're going to have essentially uh, a ghetto district right here, a more rundown section. As you can see, it's already piled up with trash that I've placed. We're going to have some shack structures that are being used to house the workers who are on the lowest ring of the communist social ladder. And I'm thinking that um, the very last shack back here in the very back corner uh, will be the shack where these workers used to stay before this was built and we're going to have it be converted over to just a giant outhouse for the whole settlement. So uh, whatever shack's going to be right here with the rest of our workers in it is going to be positioned right next to the outhouse shack. Before we jump into workshop mode and do just a bit of building on that though, I want to answer one last question that you guys had um, from last episode and I am going to answer more of those. Uh, as I keep working on this, but for now, let me just answer the anarchy question. Uh, you know, why is there an anarchy flag and uh, transport ship here in a communist settlement? Well, the answer is actually uh, pretty straightforward. It's just a enemy of my enemy is my friend scenario. Uh, the Minutemen don't want to have these uh, pleasure island boats docking at Minutemen settlements, and because the Minutemen uh, do control uh, most of the coast, this is one of the few settlements where ships from Pleasure Island can successfully uh, dock. So, 
the communists definitely don't uh, endorse the island, which is, as you guys pointed out, basically a hotbed of the worst kind of capitalism. But they do allow the transport ships to dock here, probably in exchange for uh, resources and uh, propaganda purposes as well. I'm sure that there's going to be some uh, advertisements on the no holds barred Pleasure Island for Warwick Homestead and their communist ideals. So just a bit of a symbiotic relationship there, although I'm sure that uh, Pleasure Island and the communists have no love lost between them and really no trust at all. All right, guys, let's head back over here. I'm going to wait until daylight and we're going to build some of these shacks here in the corner. Let's head over here. It's a little bit dark still, but sun's coming up. And let's back out of OC Decorator, where I was placing some props earlier. And see what we have for some prefab uh, shacks. Got some elevators there. Let's see. Some shack pieces. What mod added the complete shacks? CVC, I believe. Shacks, perfect. Ooh, this metal shack right here, I think would be a near perfect base for a uh, farmer's market. So I'm going to swap some telephone poles here. Keep calling it a farmer's market. Farmer's co-op. There we go. Got to get that uh, communist terminology going. Let's go ahead and place it down. That is a very solid start. For our housing shacks, though, we'll have maybe this one right here. How far can that go back? A little bit more. I have to move our wood pile back just a bit as well to clear up the walkway. Let's move this telephone pole as well. So this will be a shack where people are still living because our new barracks does not have enough room for them. And we're going to have something here in the back uh, that's going to be a rundown ramshackle shed which will have been converted to our outhouse. These are some really really cool shack structures though. I'll also show you guys I've resealed the fences that I removed back here among the water tanks. It's light protection for this settlement. They definitely don't have the uh, general Dave level of walls to protect it but with these spikes on the other side of the chain link fences that's not bad for protection. Not bad at all. <laughs> yes, this will be our uh, outhouse shack. I'm trying to see how far I can get it uh, into that back corner. Oh, yeah. That'll do. Now we do have some bathrooms uh, somewhere. Is it furniture and uh, miscellaneous or perhaps resources miscellaneous? Farming shrine? Ooh, okay, now here's the question guys. Would 
whatever twisted uh, branch of communism we have here allow uh, a literal shrine to the workers, specifically the farmers. I'll place it there and we'll come back to it. I'm not sure about that, but I haven't used that before, so. Shrine of Paul Revere. Aha, I was right. Here's the toilets. So I will place one of these up here. And we'll do it uh, where it is on this platform right here. Oh, got to leave an opening there. So might as well just clip it like this then. There's one toilet. And then we're going to have probably a couple of these. Um, this is the only one that really uh, fits up here. So <laughs> we're going to want to put a wall there because it's just a, a short railing. So we'll put one stall here. And uh, one stall here. That's three stalls. That's pretty good for our conversion of uh, this shack into a bathroom. We're just going to add some more details now. Look at my ceramic. I'm going to have to definitely uh, go get some more of that pretty soon. Okay, so for the rest of our details here. Structures, wood... Uh, walls. Let's first seal up this awkward railing where everyone is just going to be able to see you here. Oh, and we'll put uh, one section of cinder blocks just to help with uh, controlling the debris and smell from the outhouse. We go small shack wall oh look at that even snaps I think if I remember this correctly if we go to furniture uh, the toilet mod yes I have a toilet mod immersion requires 100% realism accessories there we go <laughs> one newspaper rack We'll put up two shower curtains. Don't snap. Come on. Two shower curtains here to rather awkwardly divide the stalls. And we'll have one curtain for that stall. Come on. And a curtain for uh, this stall as well. You guys see all these barrels. You know where this is going. We're going to go over to uh, Homemaker just to add a couple more. Homemaker. Decorations. There we go. Miscellaneous. Is it exterior? No. Warehouse supplies. So, somebody is going to be in charge of uh, removing the waste. I'm going to put a wheel cart here. I think the barrels are actually all the way at the end. Nope, I was completely wrong. That's all right. I need this pallet as well. So we're going to have some barrels of waste, which have to be wheeled out of the settlement because they are pumping seawater in to purify. Uh, although, who knows? There's probably some fertilizer use as well. But some of this waste is going to have to be removed out of the settlement. So that's going to be somebody's job. 
place our barrels under here like this. The steel's kind of getting low too. These actually do have physics, I can see that now. Makes them a bit tougher to work with. <laughs> but that should do. Huh. Uh, let's give them a plant here. That's kind of an awkwardly shaped one. The shack has like uh, no collision uh, whatsoever. Now for the lighting, I don't think an electronic light would make a lot of sense. This is supposed to be the, no pun intended, I guess, bottom barrel uh, shack that people used to live in. And now it is just the outhouse. So we'll give them a couple of candles. Is that the only kind that we have? Got a wall hanger one here. This guy will get a <laughs> very romantic. This guy, this stall will get a very romantic uh, wine bottle candle right there. We do also need a basic wash basin. Someone's going to have to empty the water out of this as well because uh, sticking with that uh, poor shack theme, going to have no water hookups directly to it. But there's our outhouse. Hey, sorry, guys. The weather is just not cooperating in game right now. Let me try to <laughs> skip time again. It is loving this rain. Okay, there we go. That's going to be it for today. I'm going to have this one be a little bit more uh, reasonable of a length to edit. The last video was, I think, like three hours of footage I had to cut down. So let me know what you guys think of our uh, workers' barracks and the Pripyat-inspired architecture. Should I continue that style, guys, for the soldiers' barracks, and where should that be? Uh, I am thinking possibly about having it be up here in this container, uh, perhaps clearing out a few things from up here because they also would want to protect this extra water purifier. This might make a good little military barracks. What do you guys think? For now, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.